Our second inductee in the 2010 National Corvette Hall of Fame is Fred Galash. Well, it may seem a bit odd that a 30-year employee of GM is placed in our enthusiast category this year. Any visit with Fred will certainly confirm that placement. He's a passionate uh, uh, advocate for, for the Corvette enthusiast. And he, he brought that from, uh, from his own experience. Uh, that wasn't just uh, talking to customers or talking to the, the leadership at Chevrolet. Um, he lived uh, the Corvette life. He knew what the cars were about and should be about. I'm reminded some, somebody told me once that every great marching band has to have one piccolo in it. O only one, you only need one piccolo, but you gotta have one. And I'm, I, I often thought Fred Galosh was the piccolo in the great marching band at uh, Chevrolet and Corvette back in, the, back in the 80s. Fred was just one of the, the people I was happy to see because he was always very cooperative and cheerful and easygoing. And uh, if you had something you wanted help with, he was uh, willing to pitch in with it. So that, that was uh, main, mainly how I observed Fred. We uh, frequently would uh, eat dinner together after the ride. And uh, so we spent many happy hours in the various restaurants in Bowling Green. When we look around the museum, it's very easy to get caught up in the tactile flamboyance of the mark. Design, engineering, personality, and even color. But it's important to remember that ultimately, America's sports car is a business. Yeah, it, it, it's the lifeblood of industry is the money. He's a PhD in economics. He knew the business side. He knew uh, how to make money. He would have to go to bat with uh, corporate uh, finance people for the various programs that we wanted to do. With a PhD in economics and a fierce dedication to his ideals, Fred championed the largest piece of that puzzle, customer satisfaction. The contribution that Fred brought to the Corvette was the voice of the customer. He was the guy who was at the platform, who was always fighting for what he thought was the best thing for the customer of the car, the best thing to do with Corvette, best way to engineer it, the best way to uh, package the options, uh, the best way to have the right price for the customer. He, he was always working on getting that proper voice of the customer onto the platform and there were some heated arguments. Fred was very vocal. If he thought something wasn't going the right way that would be the right thing for the customer of the car, you know, he would argue very hard, very long and didn't give up. He just didn't give up. He would fight with vigor for uh, ideals that he thought were right for the car. Go to toe to toe with anybody over it. But then at the end of the day, you know, when, once we had hashed it out and we'd get the engineering perspective and the marketing uh, view, uh, we were friends at the end of the day and we developed a great relationship uh, that carries on to this day. Um, because of the passion that, that uh, Fred brought to the product. While Fred may be mainly identified with the C4, customers will thank him every time they pop the hatch on their C5. Even in its original R&D form, the C5 was an amazing accomplishment. Still V8 powered, it was lighter and in the convertible model had four times the torsional stiffness of the C4. When this engineering marvel was first presented in mock-up form to marketing, Dave McClellan played the role of the proud father. We were excited to show it off to Fred and the Chevrolet marketing guys. And Fred took a look at it, and uh, his one comment that I remember was that uh, uh, we had the gas tank at the rear as we had it on the uh, C4. We actually hadn't thought much about the gas tank, uh, but just plunked it in there. and. Uh, Fred said uh, he really wanted to be able to get two sets of golf clubs in the car and the gas tank was in the way. Couldn't we figure out a better solution? And, and my first reaction to that was slight annoyance, um, which is normal, you know, you were excited and you wanted to get a pat on the back for what you had done and here you get, you get a, uh, a, 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 why don't you do this kind of remark. But what the guys figured out was extraordinary. They figured out that, that the structure of the car uh, had some large uh, volumes inside it, and you could actually put a uh, gas tank inside those volumes. I give Fred full credit for uh, having uh, pushed on us to make that happen, because we might not have figured that out 
if he hadn't have pushed on us. So thanks, Fred. The customer's best friend. Yep, and, I, and uh, that's, that's, I think, what his legacy is to the Corvette. Ladies and gentlemen, our second inductee in the 2010 National Corvette Hall of Fame, Fred Galosh.